Okay, uh, final video on my uh, OPA 549 driver. Uh, it's now in a box, and I have a input a BNC and output BNC. Uh, I haven't I haven't put in uh, different gains yet. Um, that's future, but I think you understand how to put in gains and things. So I have had the board here. So I found out one thing is that you can kill these things. So this one was all pretty and nice, and um, unfortunately I blew it up. And you know, I've run across this before in audio amplifiers. The stupid tab is tied to the negative rail. So there's minus 24 volts <laughs> on this tab. And when you put it in a box, then the heatsink becomes ground or minus 24, and then it touches the, the case, which is earth ground, which is anyway, it blew up the blew up the part. Ah. Anyway, so I had to take off the part that I mangled the leads on and jam it in here. So it's not pretty, but oh well, it works. <laughs> it definitely works. And it's nice because it's all short lead and it has the tantalums and the big caps and everything. So I mean it's 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 nice. Okay, it's nice. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna button this up and uh yeah we'll give it uh we'll give it to go. Uh, all right, there we go, all buttoned up. Uh the LED even works, which is great. So now I can know when the power is on, and I have a um, an 18 ohm load on it right now, and so it's driving a little bit, uh, not not heavy duty, but it's driving it a little bit. Oh, and I've got a glare. Oh, okay, that's better. So the cool thing is, um, I'm getting to use my internal. I'm not using this one. I can disconnect that one. Uh, but I'm using a, a generator number two as the input to this thing, and then I'm watching the watching the output on uh, on channel one. So the internal generators become very very handy. I'm using it all the time now. Uh, so you can see that we have uh, we're able to change the oops. You can see that glitch again. I'll show you where that glitch happens. Um, so anyway, down here at nine kilohertz, everything's just really really clean. Um, as we come up, you can start to get a hint of it, that little crossover distortion or whatever it is, you can start to get a hint of it, well, right about, right about here. So right about 15 kilohertz, you start to see it. Uh, let's go up here to 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz, it, it is, it's definitely, it's definitely there at 20 kilohertz. Um, it's not there with the load. So if you take the load off, that disappears. And you can operate this thing to 100 kilohertz um, and, that, and that glitch is not, not there. It's only when it's under a heavy load. Uh, right now it's 18, 18 ohms and uh, five volt uh, amplitude. Um, so let's go ahead and take it up in frequency. Let's, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's go up. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I did, oops, I did that one the wrong way. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to 30 kilohertz. I could type it in, but I'll just go here, 25, oh, there, oh, oh geez. It has an accelerator on it, so if you go a certain speed, it speeds, uh, let me just type it in, be easier. Uh, 30 kilohertz. All right, so yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty noticeable now. And let's go to, uh, Let's go to 50 kilohertz. Definitely there. And let's go to 100 kilohertz. And you can see that it's kind of moved down to the negative side of things. Um, I decided to remove the snubber circuit. The snubber circuit didn't seem to be really doing anything. I think it's really there for inductive loads and stuff that you may need it. On resistive loads, it doesn't seem to do much. So I've just, I've just left it off. Um, but we do have that weird bump there. So that's pretty obnoxious at 100 kilohertz. Um, so if we go back to, uh, go back to 15 kilohertz, it's, you see a little bump there, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty clean. I, I like it. I definitely like it. Now this particular uh, device also has some undershoot in the square wave, which I'm not happy with either. So I'm not quite sure how to get rid of that yet. Um, if I go to, uh, let's see here, let's do a sine wave. Sine waves have that little glitch too. Um, where are we? We're at uh, 15 kilohertz. Uh, let's go to 10 kilohertz. It should disappear. 
yeah, it's almost almost gone. All right, so if we go to a square wave, though, um, at first blush you say, oh, that looks pretty good. But then if you, if you go here to this negative edge and you look at it, it's got this really wild excursion. Um, and it always seems to be there, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that one yet. Um, it's only on, on fast rising edges. So I think it's, I think it's this glitch that we see. So let me kind of explain it here. If we go back to, um, let's go, oops. Let's go back to the triangle wave. And um, if we go up to the 100 kilohertz, you see that nasty glitch there. If you go to a square wave, what you're doing is you're injecting a really, really high frequency edge. So this thing is seeing that 100 kilohertz because it's this big falling edge. It seems, the chip seems to be fine on rising edges, but it's got this design weird weirdness in it for negative edges. So if you put a really fast edge, edge into it, it, uh, it gives you that, uh, gives you that bump at the bottom there. So um, you can roll off your square wave going in get rid of that but I, I don't know how to make the chip behave any better than this um, but I think uh, I think in general I'm pretty pleased with the project it is what I it is what I wanted it to be I don't need anything to be super accurate I just wanted something a real grunt amplifier to be able to drive heavy loads like motors or TE coolers or anything that takes a lot of current and um, yeah this thing should do the trick all right Project complete. Yay.